Hallelujah. What a wonderful day. I greet you in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus this morning. Well, thank you for logging in and thank you for your faithfulness, your love and support through this COVID time in being faithful as a son and as a daughter in our home. Well, it's important for you to be faithful because even though the government and what's happening with COVID-19 and all the restrictions that we can't be together, it doesn't mean to say that we should waver in our commitment to God. So we just want to appreciate you, both myself and dad, for your giving, for your faithfulness, for all that you stand and represent for, even those that are in our workforce, we love and appreciate you. You must remember one of the strategies of the enemy is that because he can't prevent a harvest, he wants to prevent the seed from happening. So it's important for you to realize that even as we can't come together, it shouldn't prevent you from getting your seed in the ground. Because the moment you do that, you must understand the harvest process is on its way. So let's stay faithful. Thank you for your tithing. Thank you for your giving. Even with the hamper feeding program, we appreciate all of you that have been part of it. We really love and appreciate your support. Thank you so much once again. Keep giving. Stay faithful because we will be victorious soon. Oh yes, one day we'll be looking back at all this and we can't believe and say that we lived through it and it happened. But at the end, it will all be okay because the Bible tells us we win at the end. We winners. Oh yes, somebody shouted. Say, I'm a winner. I'm not a quitter. Say it again. Say, I'm a winner. I'm no quitter. Oh yes, for sure. God has definitely given us all that we need in life so that we are not quitters. Well, Tomorrow is National Women's Day. And this is an exciting morning because we know that we're going to be appreciating all the wonderful women in our lives. Not just because they are female. But it's important for us to appreciate them for the leadership roles that they possess and they have and they are able to employ in their lives. Their determination, their resilience, their go-getter mentality, all their accomplishments in life. Everything is important for us to acknowledge and appreciate. So I want to take this opportunity right now as well. And uh, I want to acknowledge the strong and anointed woman in our family, in our home, and in our ministry. Oh, of course. Well, number one is our spiritual covering, which is our spiritual mom and my biological uh, mother, Pastor Roshni Joseph. You must know that uh, she is such a resilient pillar of strength in our ministry, not only in our ministry, in our family as well. We love and appreciate her so much for all that she is and all that she stands for. Going back to 1983, starting a ministry with dad, putting her all in the sacrifices that she makes and has made, nothing goes unnoticed. We love and appreciate you. Well, my wife, oh yes, on the top of my list, you must understand she is such an anointed and passionate woman of God, truly a go-getter, truly somebody that rises above circumstances so that she can accomplish. So we love her so much as family and myself as her husband. Well, saying as a husband, you must know J. Jo. She has that swagger in life that still gives off that vibe and more importantly, still gives me that vibe, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh yes, well, you must know at home, I'm the man. So it means, not just that I'm the man, it's because I'm the only man. Well, I've got three daughters and the wife. So I've got four ladies in my home. So obviously to my daughters who are my pride and joy, I know that uh, we look at them as an emerging generation as well, just like you would at the same time. Well, looking in the Joseph family, we see Rochelle, who's such a determined uh, leader in ministry, all her sacrifices and her input. We love and appreciate her together with the rest of the Joseph ladies in our lives and in our family. Well, on behalf of dad and myself, a big appreciation goes out to the lady preachers in our ministry, the pastor's wives. I want you to know that the sacrifices that you make on a consistent basis they don't go unnoticed. It's not always easy to be a female leader in ministry, also to be a wife of a pastor or of a leader. We appreciate your sacrifices, uh, the releasing of your husbands so that they can fulfill their ministry requirements. All those sacrifices, this Women's Day we love and appreciate you. Well, as well as all the other women in our workforce, together with our congregation, and to you, our viewers that are watching right now. 
We love and appreciate you. A blessed Women's Day 2021. Oh, yes. A blessed Women's Day to you. I know that tomorrow is going to be a great day. And you know what? As you know, ladies can't just be appreciating one day. So they've taken the whole month. <laughs> so for us at Revival Ministries, the month of August is Women's Month. How can you take one day to appreciate such, such key figures in our lives? So yes, it's Women's Month and obviously normally we would have had our WOW conference and man, the ladies really know how to make that a success. They go out of their way. It's amazing what happens when they come together. Sure, WOW, I can tell you from all the years that we've had WOW, it's really been one of the highlights on the calendar of our ministry. Unfortunately, because of what's happening, I know that we are unable to do it this year. But watch out, devil, because the ladies are going to come back stronger than ever. All oh, glory to God. Well, being it Women's Month, I want to take the opportunity of highlighting iconic women in the Bible. And when I use the word highlighting iconic women, my messages are not going to be gender-based. Because you must understand with God, it's not gender based because God uses us both men and women equally the way he wants to, according to his will. But the people that God uses, there are things about them that we need to draw from. There are things about them that we need to understand why he makes certain decisions, the kind of choices that he makes when it comes to people. So for the month of August, we're going to be highlighting these iconic women in the Bible. And let's see the things that they've done the things that they intend on doing, how God has chosen them, how they've been strategically placed. And let's look into that and find out how it can be applicable in our lives. Because this is not a gender thing when it comes to God. Oh man, the Bible says that in that day, when the Holy Spirit was made available, Jesus said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Oh yes. So we're not going to get involved in this gender issue that the world has right now on social media, with government, with what's happening. Our issues are not gender. Our issues are spiritual. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh, but we know who we wrestle against. It's the principalities and powers in high and dark places. So that's where our focus is. And let's do all that we can do so that we can be effective for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to be doing for this month of August. And I know that whether you're a man or a woman, a young lady or young man, a teenager, you're going to be blessed this month. Well, keep on staying logged in and make sure that you start your watch parties, share this, get everybody around the screen. You're always having screen time, hours like you can't believe, but this screen time is special when it comes to being uh, with God, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Well, while we're talking about sitting at the feet of Jesus, Let's take our scripture reading this morning from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Now, I know that a lot of you have your Bibles on your phones, so you may not be able to access it while you have. And uh, as you're watching this morning, I'm going to read for you. For those of you that have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. And uh, let's read. And I want to read from the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah. Now, this is what it says. Verse 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, here we go. Verse two, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gets interesting. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez, the father of Hezron. Now we go on. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nahon. Nahon, the father of Salmon. And Salmon, the father of Boaz. Listen to this. Whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. Wow. Now, when you go on to read, we see the genealogy from King David right up to Joseph, to Jesus Christ. Now, I don't have time to read it all there, but it's there as you go when you read on. But I want to highlight as I stop at this point, we look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ 
And as you go through it, you see such stalwarts. As you begin to go through it, you see kings, priests, highly respected people, uh, uh, women that were amazing uh, and being mothers. But right here, one sticks out from all those that are the prominent figures that carried the anointing, that's in the genealogy. Uh, when you look at all these names, there is a bump in the road as we can look at it. And we understand who that is. And we know that is Rahab. Now, why is Rahab that bump in the road? Why is Rahab such a controversial figure when it comes to the woman in the Bible? Well, we all understand and we know her profession. For those of you that don't, Rahab was a prostitute. Now, Rahab being a prostitute, can you believe and imagine that she of all women is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Now, when I look at her being mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, it's for good reason. It's a reason that we cannot ignore and just put aside to say, well, yes, she was part of it. But God wanted it mentioned in this infallible word. word. Rahab the prostitute. Wow. So when you look at this list, that one person sticks out. And you know what? We all know that we are kind of sheep. And when you look at sheep, we understand the color of sheep. But the one sheep that will stand out metaphorically is the one that's called the black sheep. <laughs> oh yes, when you look in this family line, in this genealogy, Rahab is the black sheep in the family. And uh, obviously because we know that she used to be a prostitute at the time. But when you're looking at the black sheep in the family, when you're looking at the one that is being categorized, that does not conform to the norm, we begin to realize and understand there's so much about that person that in the natural, we want to forget, we want to ignore. But I want to encourage you, men and women alike today, just like Rahab was that black sheep in the family. I want you to know that even men, people, families can look at you different when you don't conform, but not my God. Oh yes, I want to encourage you that you are no black sheep. That's the title of my message this morning that I'm sharing with you. I'm no BS. Oh yes. I know black sheep. The devil can look at you that way. The families can look at you that way. Friends can look at you that way. Through your schooling career, your childhood, your young adulthood, even now, there are things about you that people don't like and they purposely want you overlooked. But I want to encourage you this morning as we go through Woman's Month and realize the iconic woman that God used. And when we see it, use them for good reason, irrespective of their stature, their status, their position in life, God used them. God didn't look at them as the black sheep in his family line. In the family, he used them. Go on, say, I know BS. Oh yeah, say it aloud. Tell somebody, say, you know BS. Tell somebody else, you know BS. Say, I know, I know BS. Meaning, I'm not the black sheep. When it comes to God's eyes, you're no black sheep. I want you to know that. I want you to digest it. And I want you to understand it. Now this morning, when you look at being the black sheep in the family, or when you understand that kind of quotation being used on somebody, the reason why is when you look at the urban definition of what a black sheep would be, it is the one that is generally wanted to be overlooked or one who is rejected in a family line. So when you look at being overlooked, when you look at being rejected, it means that they do not conform. So there's a, a lack of confirmation about those that need to identify with you as to what you should be, but what you really are. And many times when people look at you because of your past, because of your failures, because of things in your character, because of things in your ways, your attitude, people want to overlook you. People will reject you. Oh yes, even if it comes to business, comes to employment, the person that's in front of you, the HR manager that's uh, interviewing you for a job, they have a specific criteria to employ somebody that will conform to what needs to happen when they employ somebody in their company. And those that don't conform, no matter how good they are, they are rejected. They are put aside. But you know what? We serve a God 
who gives us favor. Oh, we've got so many testimonies of people that went for interviews and they did not conform to the standards that they were looking for to employ that company. But when you prayed, when we sowed seed, when we put it at the altar, they came back with you to say, I got the job. It seemed like they would have been the black sheep in that list, but how did they get the job? It's no secret. It's because of the handiwork of God. I want you to know that you are chosen today. I want you to know that you are marked today. Rahab never knew that she was marked. She lived her life the way she did, not knowing that she was marked. But man, that day, God brought her to prominence because she was marked and she was listed in the genealogy of Jesus. She didn't know it. Like you may not know how you are marked in the kingdom and you're going about life your way. I want you to understand that God has your name. He has your number. He's got you marked and he's ready to take you to a point of prominence. Irrespective about what has happened in your past. Irrespective of what people may think about you. God's got your number. You're no BS. You are no black sheep. You may not naturally conform, but God is able to use you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Oh yes. Now, as we understand that we know black sheep, Rahab didn't realize and know it at the time. But through the pages of history, we now realize it. Now there are things that I want to bring to your attention very quickly before I pray for you that when we look at how Rahab used her skill sets to get accomplished what the soldiers needed to get accomplished for, uh, in the book of Joshua chapter 2, we begin to see things about her, which is why God obviously used her. There was nobody else. There was no other person that could really do what she was able to do. And God used her. So in Joshua chapter 2, you begin to read how Rahab hid the spies and she obviously orchestrated the escape for the spies who wanted to spy in the land in Jericho, in that city, and overthrow it. So they had to come in being unnoticed and leave going unnoticed. Very difficult thing. And obviously Rahab lived in her home in the walls of Jericho, which was a good entry and exit point as well. Now, it's amazing that as we read Joshua chapter 2, and the men have come in, and they go into the prostitute's house called Rahab. I always thought and wondered, but why did God allow them to go to a prostitute's house, a prostitute's home, basically a brothel? How come it does not conform to the usual, to the people that they would align themselves with, especially doing the work of the Lord, especially wanting victory in battle when it comes to these holy wars that have been prophesied? It does not conform, but we don't serve a God who worries about confirmation. We serve a God who knows us, a God who has marked us, a God who is able to take impossible situations and turn it around. Use people that we see that we see that's impossible to use. God can turn them around. There were strengths about Rahab that were actually beneficial for the kingdom. Oh yeah, irrespective of what her profession was, there were strengths about her that were beneficial for the kingdom. I want to go through a few through this chapter. You better read Joshua chapter 2 because you'll have a greater understanding. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to pull out a few things uh, about her strengths and how she used them so that she could be effective, which is the reasons why she's named in the genealogy of Jesus. Now listen to this. The men had to come in undetected. And when they got into that brothel house, and when you look at Rahab, who is the one that had taken them in, she was able to be successful in getting them into the war, into the city, undetected. Why? That was part of her profession. She knew how to successfully get people into her house, into her business, undetected. And no, it was part of her profession. Uh, in her line of work, she knew how to hide men, basically, if we don't want to beat around the bush when it comes to words. Rahab knew how to hide men. It was part of her profession. And you know what? There were two men that needed to be hidden from the authorities. There were spies that needed to be hidden. Not only could she hide them, it was easy because she had a hideaway system. <laughs> oh yeah, she had a hideaway system. Not only does that hideaway system help people being, uh, or coming to the brothel being inconspicuous, but you know what? They also needed to know how to get away. So not only did she have a highway system, she also had a good getaway system. Spies going into the land 
wanting to spy out the land. They needed to get in and they needed to leave as well without being caught. A hideaway system and a getaway system. She, lo she lowered them uh, off the wall with a rope. No back door, no doors. She had a long rope that she lowered the men down so that they would leave undetected, unnoticed. Well, she was used to probably doing that because she would have had high profile clients as well. Not just the usual walkabouts. She would have had high profile clients that would come, that needed to hide away, and they needed a good getaway. Well, this was a perfect setup. Oh yes, it was. Now, when you look at her lodging them, keeping them there overnight, she wasn't just a worker, but when you look at it in that brothel, it was hers. It was her business. She was also a businesswoman. She was not just a worker. She, was, she owned that house. It was her house. She was an entrepreneur. The kind of business we don't like, the kind of business we won't favor, but that's what she was. She was an entrepreneur. She was a business woman. She owned that house. But you know what? At that time, her present and her past may have been shady. But what I want you to realize, no matter how shady her past was, no matter how bad her present situation was, you know what? I deduct from all of these things and all the resources that she had about herself being the black sheep in her family. All that comes to my mind and my heart is that God used her, used that place because she was strategically positioned for kingdom opportunity. Let me say that again. With all that has happened in her life, with her profession and the lack of respect and you name it, and the list goes on. To me, I look at it and I can see that she was strategically positioned for the kingdom of God. Some of you may not know it right now. Some of you may despise the circumstance and the situation that you are in. You may be upset and disappointed and hurt about your past and the things that your past has done to you. People that have done things against you. It could have messed you up. It could have brought you in a point of disrepute. Yes, I understand in the natural eyes, it will seem that way. But when we look at Rahab, when we look at her spot, when we look at where her brothel was, her house was, when we look at the entry point and the getaway point that the spies need, she was perfect for the job. What it means to me is that she was strategically positioned for kingdom opportunity. You don't realize it. You don't know it right now. With all the negative that's happening in your life, with all the negative things that's going on, be you a man, a man or a woman that's listening and watching right now, I want you to understand that where you are right now, irrespective of what has brought you here, you can be strategically positioned for kingdom opportunity. All you got to do is realize that when God looks at you, He doesn't look at you through the eyes of man. He looks at you as your heavenly Father and Creator. Oh yes, when everybody he saw that little shepherd boy. God didn't use those eyes like the eyes of man. He already saw a king. It doesn't matter what your profession is. It doesn't matter what your past may look like. But I'm here to remind you, you are no BS. You are no black sheep. You may look like that in the eyes of man, but not in the eyes of God. Oh, hallelujah. You are strategically positioned for kingdom opportunities. You don't know what you're going through right now can be very common to a handful of people, to people that are out there, people that I probably can't touch, people that pastors are unable to reach out to. But my dad always says that uh, when it comes to our workforce, when it comes to our congregation, y'all are our extended eyes, ears, y'all are our extended hands. There are areas that you are able to tap into and touch into that people can identify with. Don't just wait for the pastor to notice you. Don't just wait for the natural eyes to notice all the changes and all the things that's happening. Know that you can be strategically positioned for kingdom opportunity. Whatever has happened in your life, what's more important is that you are here right now. What's more important is that you are available right now. What's more important is that you understand that you should not foresight your future through the eyes of man. You got to do it through the eyes of God. Because it's only God that is able to use you as you are strategically positioned for kingdom opportunity. I want to tell you this this morning. How you got where you are right now. What it's taken you to bring you to the point right now. 
is not more important to God than where he can take you in your future. Your past and your present is not more important to God than where he can take you in your future. Where you're projecting your future to be right now because of your past, because of your present, is irrelevant to God when you give him your all. When you put everything aside, when you lay all aside and you say, Father, I'm putting it in the past. But today I understand I am strategically positioned. The enemy has brought me to this point. The enemy has got me here. But he doesn't know that as much as I could have caused a whole lot of trouble in getting here, but I can cause a whole lot of trouble for the devil as well. Like I preached last week, Joseph's brothers got him from point A to point B to point C, from the pit to, to the prison, and you name it and you like it. Those are the circumstances that got Joseph there. But man, it didn't dictate his future. God dictated his future. The soldiers needed help. The soldiers needed uh, to survive through troubled times. How many of you know and can identify the black sheep in families? The kind of black sheep that we would understand. And some of you can say, well, Pastor, I can think of a few. Well, we all have the cliche that every family kind of has one. But how many of you know that the black sheep in the family, they just know how to get away with blue matter? No matter what they do, they just know how to get away. Oh, the poor goody two-shoes in the family, the children that are the good ones that conform. Uh, you guys that are uh, uh, brothers and sisters that are generally on the right line, you do one little wrong thing, you get caught, you get found out, and it becomes a big problem. But man, the black sheep in the family, there's basically no wrong that they can do. They just get away. They don't get caught all the time. But here, yeah, the good ones, the ones that just know how to conform and fall in line, they just can't even make a mistake. Black sheep are specialists in knowing how not to get caught, in having strategy so that they can uh, achieve their objectives. You know what? Using all those things, all those principles that you have for negativity, of course, it'll have an adverse effect. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. But do you know what? When you use it for God, when you use it for a positive future, when you use all your resources that you have, even though people will look down on you. But when you use the principles, not those actions that bring you to the negative point, but the principles that you know and understand that make you that strong person. When you use it just like Rahab was able to do that positioning that God has allowed to get you to where you are, he can use it and operate through kingdom opportunities for you. Women, that's where you are. Men, that's where you are. Just like Rahab was perfect for the job, you are perfect for the job that God requires to save your family, to save your home, to get you to the next point in your relationship, to get you to the next point in your future, irrespective of the strategy that the enemy has used to break you down, to get you to that point. Understand God is able to change what your future looks like. God is able to change how you see your future, how others see your future. Be reminded that the day that you choose to work for God is the day that you can choose to rescue your family and even your very own future. Because when you work for God, my Bible says God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. So much so I know that is because when you look at the rewards of God, the harvest that God is able to bring about in your life when you make a 360 turn and when you say, uh -uh, I'm turning everything around. And when you do that, that harvest will even overshadow what has happened in your past. And it can happen in a moment. It happened to Rahab in a moment. You know what she did? As she normally does in her profession, Rahab knew how to seal the deal. She knew how to make a deal. Oh yes. God knew that she would never have let those men go without making that deal. She used what she had. When I look at what she used, the one thing that comes to mind was not just her mind, but also her resources. The Bible says she used a long rope, that scarlet rope, and let and fed those men, men down the wall. You know what it represents? It represents a getaway system that she used for negativity, but now she turned it around and used it for good. It represented her resources. Don't wait for the right time to be used by God.
to give to God, to understand that you are strategically positioned. Don't wait. Use what you have right now. Use what's happening right now because all it takes is faith. Just like God has performed miracles with what little people have had and transformed it, God is able to do the same with you. Don't wait until you're in a better place. Don't wait until you're in a better mental position. Don't wait until things uh, seem like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. No, use what you have right now. All that she had was her strategy, was her mindset, her entrepreneurship, her skill set. And she took that rope and she let those men down. It represents using what she had for God. There is so much that you can use for God right now. I know that people may not think it. People that look at you may not identify with it, but God is able to identify with it. Or oh, there are circumstances that may make you feel like that BS, that make, make you feel like you are that black sheep, but not in God's eyes. When you make a decision to do God's work, when you make a decision to step into the kingdom, despite your circumstances, I want you to know that you can be fit for God's use. All you got to do is say, I'm ready to make the change. I'm ready to turn my life around. I'm not going to do things just for myself, but I'm going to do it in the kingdom. When you have that kind of mindset, watch the harvest that's going to come and overtake your past and even what's happening right now. Son and daughter of God, it's time to use your strengths. It's time to use all that the enemy has used against you. It's time to use it against the enemy and it's about to work out for your good. You know why? You are strategically positioned for kingdom use. God's looking for people to step out of the boat. In your past life, in your profession that everybody can look down on, you've been the risk taker. Oh man, you used to be that fighter. Oh man, you used to be that strategist. You used to be the one that could take chances and get things done. You know what? The kingdom needs people like that. The kingdom needs people that are willing to step out. Or just like the disciples stepped out of the boat when everybody wasn't ready to do so. But do you know what? He walked on water. I want you to know that you can walk on water too. Irrespective of your doubts. Irrespective of your insecurities. You are able to walk on water. The hiding is over. Stop hiding. Stop running away because of your circumstances. Lay at the altar. Let God turn your circumstances and situation around. Even though you can be strategically positioned, but God doesn't use runners. God doesn't use people that hide. Same thing happened with Moses. He needed to use Moses, but he had to stop him from running. He had to stop him from avoiding his confrontation with Egypt, with Pharaoh. He had to stop him from running away in that desert. Look at what happened to Jonah. He wanted to go his own way. He had his own plans. God had to put a stop to it and God began to use them. I want you to know that you may not conform to the standards in your family, to the standards in society. As a woman, you may not conform as well with what may be happening. But do you know what? Even King David, he never conformed either. Because when Goliath was in front of the army, you know what? David wasn't even a soldier. Forget about being a high-ranking officer. He didn't even conform in his own family. His father overlooked him. Jesse overlooked him and brought the other sons to Samuel to be anointed. He was overlooked. Why? He didn't conform. The Bible says that Jesse said, well, I do have another son, but he's tending the sheep. Not that he looked down on him. David didn't conform. But what doesn't seem to conform with man? I want you to know with God, he makes all things possible. I want you to know that you may not conform right now, but God's not looking at that. God's looking at your faith, not your profession. God is looking at your strengths, not your weaknesses, because God is able to still use you. Because you are no black sheep in life, the days of rejection are over. The days of being overlooked are over. God will open doors. God will shut doors that men cannot shut and men cannot open. God will allow what's beneficial in your life. I want to pray with you right now that are probably going through a Rahab circumstance and situation. Obviously, when we look at what happened with her, we see it's only the handiwork of God that brought her to a point of prominence where she's mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. I want you to realize and understand this morning that man may reject you. 
but God will not reject you. I want to pray with you right now, both men and women alike. Some of you that find and feel like you are in that BS status, the black sheep status at your workplace, in your business, in your family, in your circle. It's irrelevant. All you got to do is focus all your efforts into the kingdom. Understand that you are strategically positioned for kingdom blessing and watch God use you and turn your situation around. I want to pray for you right now. Though we're going through this time of COVID, the lockdown period, there's so much of loss that people have incurred, loss of finances, business, livelihood, even loss of lives. Right now, as we're going to be celebrating Women's Month, it's probably very difficult for people to celebrate it because they've lost women in their lives. Women themselves can't celebrate because they have lost people in their lives that are dear to them. Then you get people that are embarrassed about their past. People are embarrassed about what they've gone through, some decisions that they have made in life. And they live a life of guilt. And they feel that they just cannot go on beyond that point. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. As you realize that you are no black sheep in God's eyes. That you are favored, you are called, you are marked, and you are named. God is able to touch you, bless you, and use you. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you are. Just put one hand on your heart and say, man of God, I identify. Man of God, I identify with that, with my daughter. I identified in my husband. I identified with one of my friends. You may, may, may not be going through it, but you can stand proxy for somebody. Why don't you do it for yourself? And why don't you say, Lord, I want to stand proxy for this person because I know this is how they feel. There were some people that even want to commit suicide. There are people that tried to overdose. There are people that tried to just end their lives because they are tired of being the black sheep. They are tired of going through this life the way they are. But I want you to know that God is able to bring you through. I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray together. Put that one hand on your heart. Oh, she can't tie on the yellow back. Oh, she can't tie on the yellow back. She can't tie on the back. See on the yellow back. She can't tie on the back. See on there. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Father, we look at Women's Month. And as we highlight the iconic women in the Bible that have been mentioned, those women, Father, that are so iconic, we realize it's not just the female, it's not just the gender part about them. But today we draw from the things about them that you have seen, that you were able to use. And today as we've used Rahab and she seemed to be that black sheep in the lineage and the genealogy of Jesus, but yet you chose to mention her. There are many that feel that way because of their past because of their present, because of what they are going through, because they are looking at themselves through the eyes of man. But today we look at ourselves through your eyes, through the word, and we realize that there is nothing that we can be too ashamed of, that we cannot leave at the altar. So today, Father, as your sons and daughters realize that they are favored, that they are strategically positioned for kingdom use, they lay every negativity at the altar, lay their past at the altar, lay their faults, their failures, their mishaps at the altar. And Father, they make the decision to put their hand to the plow in the kingdom and be used as you have called them. Touch them right now. Lord, those that have incurred losses through COVID-19, those that have died through this infection, those that have lost their lives at this time, it's difficult to celebrate this month with loss. But God, we are able to do it because you give us the peace. You give us the strength to carry on. Touch us right now. Bless us right now. Oh, Father, our faith, Father, has been tried and tested. And because of our past, there are some that have never lived up to it. But today, let a turn around in their mindset it happen and know that they are marked and called by you for your use. Father, you touch them, bless them, and I ask for miracle signs and workings to happen in their life, just as it, as it did with Rahab, Father, just as she made that deal by working with them, that her entire family was saved, not just her. You are able to save us, you are able to deliver us, even from the harm that the enemy will strategize against us. So touch us and bless us now as we hand ourselves over to you in the name of of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. What a powerful anointing I've just felt right here, right now. And I'm sure you felt the same. 
We would love to hear from you. For those of you that need further help, for those of you that need prayer, well, on our Facebook page is our contact details. Why don't you contact us? We would love to further be a blessing to you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you once again for watching our program, sharing this program, and helping empower people. Most of all, for this morning, realize that you are no BS. You're no black sheep. In God's eyes, you are highly favored. Keep watching the program. Keep spreading the gospel. Know that God loves you. We love you. Nothing is impossible for God to do. Because as our program always suggests, it's always up to you.